Hey gang, what's up? It's Wes, and uh, hmm, do you do you smell something? Is that a little is that a little spiciness in the air? <laughs> this time we are talking about a taboo, something that is best left unsaid and unspoken of, a dirty secret, a way that cheaters do art are you an art cheater hmm do you do you do you trace hmm we are going to be talking about tracing and is it cheating is the act of tracing cheating is it cheating you is it cheating society is it cheating the world at large? Are we worse off as humans because of tracing? Has it caused the ill? <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk about tracing. And we're going to see uh, what, whether it's worth all the hype. And what all that stigma is about. And what's going on. And so if you've ever traced in your life. Um, first of all, how dare you. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> if you've ever traced, uh, this one's for you. And uh, spoiler alert, that means everybody should watch this video. Spicy! All right, guys. So I have my coffee here, and let's uh, cause some drama. <laughs> what do you say? Like I said in the opening, this is going to be a little spicy. A little spicy. So I hope you're ready for this. Um, the comments are probably going to go a little crazy with this, but I want to cover the stigma of tracing. Now, before we get too far into this, um, the first thing that I find questionable is what do you mean by tracing? which sounds like a weird question, but the reason why I bring that up is different people have a different understanding of what the term tracing means. So let's say, okay, the, the, the first thing you do not want to do that literally is against the rules, it's, you know, plagiarism, all that stuff. Do not trace somebody else's art. Literally, like, don't go line by line, go over their art, and then claim it's yours. That is not okay. That is literally plagiarism. It, it is against the law. You will get in trouble. You will get caught. Like, don't do it. Just don't do it. What are you doing? Like, just, you know better than that, right? But going out from that, what do people mean by tracing? So my understanding of tracing is like taking an image. Let's say you're making an image of a horse and you're using a reference and in let's say photoshop or uh art rage or whatever you're using you bring in that picture of a horse on its own layer then you make a layer on top of that and you draw basically tracing the horse is that cheating my my instinct says no and the reason why is multiple but First off, cheating what? What do you mean? Like, cheating yourself? Cheating your ability to transfer an image with your eye based on proportion and angle and stuff like that? Maybe. Maybe. You might be you might be cheating that skill set because you're you're not, you know strengthening that muscle of being able to look at a thing and then transfer it down just by eye which is that's a hard skill that's a very hard skill in fact I would argue that might be in my opinion one of the hardest skills to develop I think you can learn color theory I think you can learn value I think you can learn structure and composition and stuff like that well before you can learn proportion proportions tough and yeah if you're talking about cheating uh, if you're talking about like cheating yourself 
out of maybe practicing that ability to transfer uh, by eye, sure, fine, whatever. But one, you're not in a contest. So you know what I mean? Like wh who, what are you cheating? What, what are you now getting the grand prize? Did you take performance enhancing drugs? Like what, what are you talking about in regards to cheating? Um, no, like tracing is actually a pretty valuable step in the learning process because go ahead and get a picture of a portrait or, you know, get a picture of a model or something like that. And then do two things. One, uh, play it by eye, maybe get pure ref or something and open it on one window or one canvas or whatever. And then just try to draw it by eye on the other canvas. Just try doing it. It's tough. You might be pretty good at it. You might not be great at it at all. But then I want you to make a new layer after you're done and then yeah, bring in the image and then trace over it. Okay. Trace over it, but, but, but do it with intent. Trace with intent. And what I mean by that is notice the angles, notice the way, like maybe the bridge of the nose and the separation of the eyes and what are the eyelashes doing? And like, look at the curve of the face and how does the cheekbone match up with the bridge of the nose? And you know, where does the chin lay? Is the angle of the head doing a thing? Like, keep all that stuff in mind while you're tracing. So trace actively. Be active. Mentally active while you're doing this. Then, make a third layer. Hide the other layers. Hide your tracing and hide your first pass. Then I want you to try to draw it by eye again. And you're going to notice something. You automatically improved because you now have immediate muscle memory on what the shape should be. So the chin's gonna look a little better, the nose is gonna look a little better, your eyes are gonna be at the cor more of the correct proportion. Tracing is useful. It's extremely useful. Um, in fact, I know professional portrait artists that work in oils, they work in digital, they work in a variety of deals, they get big money commissions, I'm talking five-figure commissions every single time they trace every time and it was brought to me in the way of if you're being paid that sum of money your proportions better be perfect they better be perfect because likeness in my opinion for a portrait or a horse or you know whatever likeness is proportion that's all it is. How far are features away from each other? So tracing helps with that. I still don't think it solves the, the problem that you might have about, oh, well, now you're cheating yourself. Or I don't think it's solving all of the problems that you're going to run into. And here's, here's another thing of proof on that. Uh, let's say I have five art students. I give them a picture of a still life, or let's just say an apple, something easy. Let's just do an apple, an apple on a plate. I give them the reference and I tell every single one of them to trace this, trace it. I want you to spend two and a half hours and I want you to trace this apple. I don't want you making any marks that aren't there. Uh, I want you to trace it to the best of your ability. You have two hours. I'll see you in two hours. After two hours, I will get five different pictures. I know for a fact I will, but how is that possible? If you're tracing it, wouldn't you get the exact same image across the board? No. People hold their pencils differently. The way and the size of, of, the, of the subject in relation to the canvas, the way the composition is set up, you notice I didn't mention any of that stuff. All I said. I gave you a picture. Hey, man, I want you to trace this. You still have to solve some of these other problems. And different artists are going to solve them in different ways. Now, before I go into my example that completely obliterates the whole idea of tracing being cheating, I want to talk about some of, uh, some of my favorite artists ever completely traced. Not every time. But a very large portion of the time they would trace. Um, I mean, one of the best, most successful poster illustrators in the history of the medium is uh, Drew Struzan. 
He traces. Are you going to tell me Drew Struzan doesn't know how to do art? <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, man. He made the bet like oh, those beautiful Indiana Jones and Blade Runner and these gorgeous, gorgeous movie posters. That's him. You know what I mean? Like that, that's his forte and it's beautiful and it's like I can't begin to understand how he does what he does. Genuinely. Um, Norman Rockwell did. Walt Disney did. Uh, pfft. gosh, shit, Da Vinci did. <laughs> uh, if you really want to blow your mind, if you if you in your head you have like a Mount Rushmore of artists, I, if you had four artists that you really look up to, I can say with a kind of certainty, at least three of them during some point in their learning or during even maybe their professional work traced. I, with almost certainty, I can assure you of that. Um, it's a it's a it's a technique. Tracing is a technique, the same way that gridding is a technique. Drawing a grid and then transferring that grid. All you're doing is transferring information. Why do you think they make carbon paper? Why do you think they make those carbon copy papers to take a thing and then draw it onto a canvas? It, that's ex it tra it's literally called tracing paper. It's a technique, man. Like. And here, here's my other side tirade before I get to the main example. Always, without question, if somebody is griping in some comments or so tracing, you know, what a cheater, they do two things. Number one, they have no artistic talent. I can almost with certainty assure you of that. They don't do it. They have no clue what it takes. And number two... Even if they did trace, it would not look good. If that person that was complaining about quote unquote tracing tried to trace something, it would look bad. They have they would have no control over their hand and the line weight and the they, they would have no aspect of it would still look bad, even if they traced it. They don't work as a professional. They don't know anything about art. It's just that's how it is. It's always the amateurs. It's always the people that don't do it at a high level that complain about techniques every time every single time and you know if you come into the comments and you start lambasting and stuff I will go check out your portfolio I will go do it because I want to see if so and so is God's greatest gift to humankind in art if they've never traced and they're 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 an angel floating above all of us mere mortals that like get out of here you are not better than Drew Struzan <laughs> you're not i'm not i'm no 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 way no way it's not happening i i could go about this all day like but he, here's the thing if you want to talk about how little tracing matters in the grand scheme of things Let's say I'm an art director and I give you, let's say the picture of the apple, something really easy. And I'm like, all right, man, uh, cool. Like, like, go ahead, go ahead, do whatever you need to do. I just need this kind of sketch of an apple. I, I need, I need the sketch. And you know, the deadline's tight and you're like, oh man, I got to get this apple, right? And, you know, this is for the art director. I got to do it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to just landmark the big shapes. I'm going to trace it to make sure my proportions are right. And then I'm going to kind of infer some stuff in the middle. You know, just kind of do my thing. And then you come back to me and I'm like, oh, great, man. This looks, this looks, you know, this is exactly what I wanted. Um, the next step is I need you to light this scene five different ways. I need a backlight. I need a front light. I need a Rembrandt light. I need a major fill light. Um, and then I need a floodlight setting. But by the way, the floodlight setting has to be at night where the floodlight is actually warm. Um, but the rest of it is actually during nighttime. And I need those in about two days, if you don't mind. Does tracing help you with any of that? Does it help you with form? Does it help you with color? Does it help you with getting your, your, your sense of ambience, your, your lighting, your rendering? Nothing. It doesn't touch any of that stuff. You might think it does, but it doesn't. 
If I give you a picture of a portrait and you trace it and I say, good job, I need you to light it from the other direction, your lack of skill and knowing about form is going to make it fall apart. You will not be able to do it. So tracing is not a solution. It's not the thing that's going to make your art good. So I think people think of tracing as cheating are actually putting too much stock in tracing, period. I think they're, they're way overestimating how important proportion is. Some of my favorite portraits I've ever seen remind me of the person, but they are not one-to-one -one photocopy, perfect nose, nostril hair here, exactly what I saw on my reference. No, 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 because I think at that rate, why are you painting? You should just take a picture. You need the essence of the subject, and tracing does not get you the essence of the subject. Tracing helps you with proportion, maybe some landmarking for values, which is kind of the way I do it if I have uh, something that I need it to look pretty specific. Um, and hell, this, this art rage piece that we're doing right here, I traced the outline of it, you better believe I did, because I wanted to make sure my proportions were right. But you'll notice my tracing wasn't exact. It was very landmarky, mappy, like, okay, this value goes here, this goes here. It was very quick. I want to say the whole setup for, for the sketch and the line art and stuff was maybe three or four minutes. It didn't take long at all. But now I can work in confidence with my artistic expression side of value and, and color and shape and brushstroke and, you know, all that stuff to make it my own and try to put maybe some life in there that maybe didn't exist before, or maybe give it a different vibe. That's, that's the essence of art, the self-expression side. Um, if, if you want to look at the, the history of tracing, I'll put it that way. Look up the term camera obscura. And you're going to notice that a lot of your favorite Renaissance painters and a lot of your like Raphaelite and all that stuff, uh, they basically used mirrors and uh, traced. It's kind of what they did. It's sort of, well, I mean, there's no other way to really knock out huge paintings for the church in, you know, a month. It's just how it was. I mean, you just did it. That's what happened, and then you did it, and then, but... The real beauty of it, very, very rarely for Rembrandt paintings or Vermeer or something, do I hear about, wow, look at the exact proportion of the eyes between each other. It's exactly one eye apart. Isn't that amazing? I've never heard a critique like that. With Rembrandt, it's always about the lighting. With, with, with Caravaggio, it's always about the mood. With, with Da Vinci, it's about his range. You know what I mean? It's stuff that has really nothing to do with proportion. Like, proportion is one out of ten things to look for in one of ten steps of a painting. It's minuscule. So if you need to get something done, if you want to focus on brushwork, if you want to focus on colors, if you want to focus on that stuff, trace your reference, man. Just get it on the canvas and get to work. Quit making excuses, just do it. And then, here's the other thing, then do some art without tracing. Maybe just look at the reference or work from imagination or whatever. And what you're gonna notice is your line quality is actually going to be better than it was before. If you've dedicated that time to really understand shapes about your subject and what you're putting on a canvas, you're gonna get better. You're getting better, not just in like, oh, my horse looks like a horse. No, it's more like now my, my hand can control curves better. I can now render contour lines or forms better because now I know what they feel like. I know what they look like. I know what it should be on my canvas or on my paper or on my you know layer or what have you because I mimicked it from reality a few times. I know people are going to talk about, well, there's people that draw from imagination like Kim Jong-E. What about Kim Jong-E? Kim Jong-E has drawn 16 hours a day for 45 years. Yeah, 
it, I bet in his early days when he was looking at some stuff, he may have traced some things. But now, just through sheer will, just brute force of decades of drawing an insane amount, of course he's going to be able to draw anything from imagination. His visual library is outrageous. But what's a great way to build your visual library and build it correctly? Trace it. I, okay, here's the deal. Go ahead, find a cool picture, go on Google, or, or go on like Unsplash, or Pexels, or Pixabay, a, kind of a stock photo website, and just search for an image of a tree. Just any tree, do me a favor and do this. It, go, go look at any tree. Get the image, bring it into Photoshop, or Clip Studio, or ArtRage, or whatever, and trace it. But really trace it, like trace the details, trace the width and the 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 you know the way the bark is and maybe some of the leaves and stuff like that that drawing is going to take you forever and the reason why is you're going to be tracing every single detail every single one and at a certain point you're going to get bored it may be very quickly i know for me it'd be very quickly um you're going to realize that tracing is not the answer. It's not the thing that's going to bring your art to the forefront. So really to pull this back around to the stigma of it, I think the stigma comes from multiple different areas. I think it comes from non-artists thinking that art has to be something that like, usually the same people that are against tracing are also against using any reference at all. They think that, Oh, well, a good artist would just have it all in their head and imagination, which is absolute nonsense, and those people have no idea what they're talking about. Um, usually it's those people, or it's younger artists or still developing artists that feel like they're taking a shortcut and that they're going to be found out to be a fraud or something. You know what I mean? And like we said before, if you're tracing other people's artwork get out of here like no way absolutely not unacceptable unacceptable especially if you're calling it your own Ugh, gross like that is actual theft get out of here with that but if you're just coming up and you're 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 needing to hey i need to figure out well how do these mountains actually work well, what is what's a boulder I, I know i've seen a rock before but let me draw it Trace it. Trace it four or five times. And then try to draw it from imagination based on what you traced. And I think you're going to be surprised at you, the amount of information you retain. But not only the amount of information, but what information you retain. You might surprise yourself. You may not get the overall like outer lines and basic shape down. But you might have nailed some of those details from memory. That's your visual library. So then the next time you go and you're working maybe on a client piece or a commission piece or even a personal piece and you have to draw rocks, you're more likely to recall your little trick that you figured out while you were tracing and not even need to trace, not even need to bring that stuff. You don't have to be so attuned to your reference. It is good to learn it. It's good to it really it's good to trace it like figure it out man figure it out i perfect example if you want to get really good at gesture drawing and drawing people trace people but go from tracing the entire person to just maybe tracing what you think their skeleton looks like not maybe the full rendered skeleton but maybe draw the circle or the head and then where do you think the spine is going yeah you could draw directly on top of your reference in a way, that's tracing. You are using the subject itself to infer the information that you're adding. So that's tracing, right? I mean, once again, it goes back to that point. What do you mean by tracing? What do you mean? I still cannot get a clear answer on it. Well, tracing is when you get every single detail of... I mean, not really. Like, there, there's so many different ways you can do it. So there's a there's stigma, and I don't know why it exists. I mean, sadly, I do know why it exists, and it's the same toxic crap that like some art schools will teach about, like, well, using reference is evil. 
Oh, you should just know everything forever. Like that, who are these people? Um, that's the difference between an amateur and a professional, in my opinion. A professional cannot use enough reference. <laughs> They're like, oh, this would have looked way better if I had more reference. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's it's on the flip side. If you're if you're so worried and prideful about like I drew this all from imagination, I bet you did because it sucks. <laughs> I told you, man, we're spicy today. We're on it, man. I, I'm just I'm just sick of this stuff that people have this holier than thou feeling about the right or wrong way to express yourself with art. Like get out of here, man. Who made you emperor of or empress of anything? No. Like, come on. It's all about learning. It's all about pushing yourself. It's all about growing. And the best way to learn is to learn. You have to know what stuff looks like. You have to know what it feels like when you draw it. Tracing is a great way to do that. Now, be upfront about it. Be like, yeah, guys, I traced this. I traced it, but I learned so much because I learned about the angles and I had no idea about these little crags in the mountain and I, you know, just really cool value shifts and stuff. And I had no idea, but now I do. And, and, you know, I'm going to take that forward and use it in some other art where I don't have to trace. Really, it's it's like, you know, getting to the point to where you don't even feel like you need to trace anything. That really removes the stigma. If you have enough experience that you're like, I don't need to trace anything. I'm just going to look at it on reference and I can render that idea out in my own way. Tracing is a way to build confidence. And I think confidence is... 85 to 90 percent of creating interesting art to look at so if by tracing for a bit helps you get there do it do it you know i've i don't know i the, the, i know this has been kind of roundabout and stuff like that but just know that learning you know the best way that you know how to learn you know what i mean i've always told students um, you know, even back when I worked at the college and stuff like that, is like, learn how to learn, and you're going to go way further, way faster than a lot of your peers. And tracing is part of that. It's, if your job, or not job, but if, if your intent is to be an artist, is to represent the world around you in a two-dimensional way, you have to know exactly how that stuff works. And tracing is a great way to do that. Um, but like I said, be active with it. Don't just kind of, well, I'm going to trace this outline because the, the bald guy on YouTube said it was a good idea. Like, <laughs> be active with it. Be like, why does the, this form is here and I know the light is hitting here, but why is that happening? And you're going to start kind of answering your own questions by the way you render your tracing. So, anyway, I hope this get, this gets your mind going a little bit. This gets you your, your motor revving, as it were. Uh, but what do you think about the whole tracing stigma? I'm gonna do. I could do another one of these just about reference, but it'd be kind of the same. It's like, how do you know what the world looks like if you're not looking at the world? You just can't do it. But anyway, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think that tracing is some some sin? that you must be washed away of and how dare you call yourself an artist like are, are you that person because I mean I'd love to hear your thoughts but I'm gonna tell you you're wrong I mean it's just that's life um <laughs> you know what I mean like it's just but but if you're struggling with it are you an artist that, that struggles with the idea like do you think you're tempting fate or like oh here's the dark arts of tracing like do you have that stigma? Because I still have a little bit of it. Uh, and all that kind of art school beat that into my head. And now I'm trying my best as a professional to get away from that. Um, but, but like, do you still have that stigma in your mind? And like, what would be a good way, do you think, for someone that has the stigma to be able to wash it away? Are you doing any exercises or any sort of different deals? Like, are, are, did you go from tracing to maybe doing a grid system? Um... You know, which is still proportion based, but it's a little more free handy and stuff like that. Like, does that make you feel better? Um, but then at the end of the day, you're still using a mechanism. It's like saying that you should be able to draw a straight line without a ruler. Maybe, but like, 
who cares? They make a ruler for a reason. You know, pencils have an eraser on the end of them. Use it. So, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I might do some more of these stigma videos. They're actually fun. I get riled up when I think about them, <laughs> but they're fun, man. But anyways, that's my time. Go out there, make cool art. Don't plagiarize stuff. If you do, I'm going to karate chop you. Um, yeah, you know better than that. But anyways, go have fun. Go make cool art, and we will see you next time. Peace.